So September is uh, Prostate Cancer Awareness Month and standing true to the theme, men, the more you know, the less you have to fear. Consultant urologist at Dewey, Dr. Belinda morrison Bridgen is here to give us the facts. Good morning. Welcome to Smile Jamaica. Great to see you as always. Good morning. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, boy, we go through this every year, don't we? We do, but it's important, right? Yeah. Um, are we getting the message, men? Are we getting the message? I, I think so, to a certain degree. I think if we judge the effectiveness of our programs in terms of health promotion, in terms of number of people who are coming out, yes. Definitely we've been seeing increasing number of men screening at the Cancer Society. Um, we still have challenges. I think we still are not reaching the younger age group of men. When we look at the mean age of the men who present for screening, they're in their early 60s. Well, they should be early 40s. Well, we suggest to start at age 40. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing that I found is that even when they do present for screening, if they're to take it a step further for some confirmatory test, you're not finding as many of them availing themselves to that. So the fear still um, persists. Is it the fear of finding out? Is it the, the way the, the test is administered? What, what is it? I think it's a combination of things. I do think that um, the fear of the test is one issue. But if you think about the men who present to the Cancer Society, they've already overcome that fear. Right. They are there. Right. Um, I think the other fear is that's real is the fear of finding out yep. and what it will mean to them. Nobody wants to hear that they have cancer. And as I always say, it's even worse for a man who feels perfectly healthy, which is really how most of the men in the very early stages of this, this, the disease, disease feel. Yeah. So there are no symptoms. Uh, there are no symptoms. So there's just that fear of what this diagnosis will mean to them. Will it affect my manhood? Will it affect my role in my relationship with my wife? Um, how will it affect my erections? Can I afford this treatment? Does it make sense? Do I even believe the doctors? And I think that these are some of the real issues that face many yeah. of our men. Prostate cancer is what slash what causes it? Um, if we look, I, I don't want to so much talk about cause, but I want to talk about risk factors, because right. I don't think that we know exactly what causes it. Right. But the major risk factors that we have are increasing age. So it's a disease that is seen above age 40. Most of the men you will pick up wherever you are, even if you screen widespread, really would be in their 60s and 70s. So it's a disease of the man who ages. Um, it's more commonly seen in blacks, but it doesn't mean it's a disease exclusive to blacks because in the United States, it's the second commonest cancer that they see, second to skin cancer. Right. And it's a cancer that is seen commonly in persons who have a family history of not only prostate cancer, but also breast cancer. Um, of course, if we want to really delve into cause, we have to talk about genetics. And there are many genetic abnormalities that may promote prostate cancer. How prevalent is it? It's very prevalent. It's the number one cancer that we see here. In Jamaica? In Jamaica, yeah. It's the number one cancer that we see here in Jamaica. And from records, it's also the number one, um, the number one cause of cancer-related deaths. Is it? Um more lifestyle? You, you already said something like a family and stuff. But right. Is it, is so lifestyle does play a role. Um, unhealthy lifestyle, of course, may promote prostate cancer. Un unhealthy Not, in this sense means? Lack of exercise, uh, eating you know, unhealthy food, cho food choices. So high cholesterol content food, a lot of refined food, um, food with a lot of red meat, um, food with a high starch content. Yeah, yeah. it does. You said um, no one wants to hear that they have cancer because almost every time you hear, we also hear they die from cancer. Yeah. What about if you find out early? Is that a death sentence? No, and, and that's the good thing about prostate cancer. The survival rate, you know, we like to talk about in medicine, survival rates in terms of five year or 10 year survivals. It's over 95% for early stage disease. So if it is picked up very early, just with screening, then survival is, 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 is very, very long. And there are many men who can attest to this. The problem is when it's de detected late, um, survival clearly will yeah. drop. Yeah. Yeah. If it's picked up early, the survival rate is good. What about your lifestyle? If it's picked up early and you, what, you get rid of it or you control well, it? Well, it what depends. It really depends. The good thing is that there are options. In life, we always like to have options. Mm -hmm. So there is an option of surgery which is what a urologist does. We remove the prostate gland. Um, your lifestyle after, it may be affected, maybe temporarily, but I always like to say the urologist has the advantage of, of managing those things. So men who fear the erectile dysfunction or impotence that may result, 
but we do have things that we can do to that improve that. that. Correct. Yeah. And, and men also fear the issues with their urinary control or continence, and we can fix that as well. Yeah. Another option is radiation. Um, and yes, that too is associated with um, side effects, but not significant. And there are options to, to manage those. And there are some men who have prostate cancer once diagnosed. It's so early. It's so low grade, we would like to say. It's not very aggressive. We can actually observe them, meaning that we don't have to do right. invasive treatment. And we call that active surveillance. And clearly their lifestyle is unchanged. Yeah. You said sometimes there are no symptoms. Mm -hmm. If they are symptoms, yeah. what are they? What are they? So the ones that we don't want to see. If you go to the university hospital right now, you'll see some of these patients. Blood in their urine. Now, I'm not suggesting that the only cause of blood in your urine is, is prostate, prostate cancer, cancer right. but it may present that way. Spinal cord compression. A man just walk in and just falls, or after trivial trauma, falls and cannot get up because there's been spread to the bones surrounding the spinal cord or even involving the spinal cord and there's compression and you just can't walk. Paralysis. Um, sometimes it may present with difficulty passing urine. We like to call in Jamaica stoppage of water, right? Those are some of the things that it can present with our weight loss, just generalized weight loss, feeling weak because of, of distance spread. Yeah. Is it a once a year check every six yes. months? Yes, so um, as a society, which is a Jamaica Urological Society, we recommend once yearly commencing at age 40. And the screening tests, which we need to know about, are two simple tests. One is a physical exam, which is done by the physician, and it's called the digital rectal exam. And this is where the finger is inserted in the rectum to feel the prostate. It's a very simple, painless, and quick test. And in addition to that, we do a blood test called the PSA. PSA is short for prostate-specific antigen. Yeah, I've I've done them both, and uh, and and uh, the, the the what do you say rectal? Yeah, the rectal it, exam. It, it literally lasts about thirty seconds. Yeah. Um, I've, and I've I've done it a couple of times. To be to be to be honest, I haven't. <laughs> I haven't seen Dr. Morrison for a couple of years, but I I used to do it every yeah. year, and I yeah. I need to get back to that. But yeah, it, 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 is, it, is, it is strange, but it really and truly lasts about 30 yeah. seconds, and it, it's not painful in any way. Why can't it just be the blood test and were it just one test to mm. do, which is the, the more, more accurate right. one? Right, so the more sensitive test, so that's a test that would more likely pick up disease, would be the blood test, and then that's a fact. Why do we not advocate only the blood test? Simply because um, very aggressive cancers sometimes can be so... Right. Um, aggressive that it doesn't produce significant volumes of the PSA and so it doesn't elevate the PSA and the only way it's detected is by a physical right. exam. So really you need to do so it with Ideally. And you do yeah. it basically not at the same time. But around the same time yeah. period. Yeah, I would go But I right. will say this for a man who is so petrified of doing a digital rectal exam but he wants to screen, I don't think any doctor would turn him away if he said that he just wants to do the blood test alone. Okay. All right, and I know the Cancer Society, they've been doing free prostate cancer screening. Right. And they've gone a, a, a number of them already. The next one I see here would be on Tuesday, September 25. Right. It's at the Villa Medical Center. That's at 29 Main Street in Mandeville. Right. Um, it says free prostate cancer screening, health talks. They have booth displays. displays, And it says, it says the first 100 men will be screened for free. Mm -hmm. So it goes... Tuesday, September 25, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Villa Medical Center in Mandeville at 29 Main Street. And the first 100 men will be screened. The next one will be Friday, September 28 in Montego Bay at the Sam Sharp Square. And Sunday, September 30 at the Wexford Court Hotel on Gloucester, Gloucester Avenue in Montego Bay. And I guess if you want um, more information, you could check the Jamaica Cancer Society. It's uh, jamaicacancersociety.org and they will tell you. Always good to see you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. And that's again and good luck. God Thank bless. You. Dr. Belinda Morrison-Vigen. Um, 10 minutes to your health. We'll do it again next Thursday.